God. Everything I have, it belongs to you, God. And right now, God, I need you to move. 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 I need you to move in my children, God. I need you to move in my house, God. I need you to move on my job, God. I need you to move in my neighborhood, God. I need you to move in this state, God. I need you to move in this nation, God. We need you to have your way, God. We need you to have your way, God. We need you to have your way, God. Hey, like a mighty storm. Hey, come and stir. Can you lift your hands and say, have your way. All over the sanctuary, standing on your feet. Can you just lift your hand and tell God to just have your way. Come on, have your way, Lord. Start with me, Lord. Have your way in my life. Have your way in my home. Have your way on my job. Have your way in my neighborhood. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. I can't do it without you. I can't do it without you. I can't do it without you. And whatever you are doing in this season, Lord, don't do it without me. Have your way in my life. Have your way. Oh, Lord. Let the Holy Ghost fall. Somebody said, let the Holy Ghost fall. Fall on me. Have your way this morning. Let your anointing come on in. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. oh Lord. Lift those hands right there one more time. And tell God, thank you. And say, God, we welcome you. We welcome your presence. We embrace your habitation. Because his, his habitation is among the praises of God. If you praise God, he said, I make my habitation. When you learn how to praise God. Right there in your home or wherever you're watching us from. Learn how to praise God. Through it all. Learn how to praise Him. Learn how to praise God. Have your way, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's oh, exciting. I'm excited about Jesus. Clap your hands. Give Him my hand. And clap and praise. Oh, thank you. There's a word from the Lord this morning. You have your Bibles. Bible to Acts chapter 28, Acts chapter 28, verses 4 through 6, and when the barbarians, uncivilized folk, vicious angry people saw the venomous beast hang on to his hand. They said among themselves, no doubt, 
this man is a murderer whom though he had escaped the sea yet vengeance suffered not to live and he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm how be it they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly but after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him they changed their minds and said that he was a god I, I, I want to talk about this morning. I've got over the swelling. I, I, I need you to repeat after me. I got over the swelling. My subtopic this morning is shake it off. I got over the swelling. Shake it off. You may be seated in, in the presence of God. If, if I would summarize just a little bit of what I'm talking about this morning. And I serve you notice that Paul is saying here that this venomous snake that grabbed a hold to his hand to take him out. But he says, I got over the swelling. When people thought that I was going down and this venomous snake was going to take me out, I shook it off and got over the swelling. Ain't God all right? I, 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 I want to tell you, they, 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 they sit here and Paul, a man of God. How many know sometimes you land in places that wasn't in the plan? Whether by accident or by choice, uh, it wasn't in the plan. So you land in places in your life that you didn't plan to be in. Paul did not plan to be in this barbarous country. He didn't plan to be there. He had spoken to the people on the ship that had him bound to go somewhere. Take him before a king. But then... He says to them, don't sell. But how many know when you become disobedient to the man of God, when the man of God give you a word, you can grasp that word, or you can walk away from that word, and I guarantee you pretty soon you're going to experience what the man of God told you. The man of God told them, to don't sail. But they decided to sail anyway. And since they it wasn't before a very, very mascus storm came. When the storm came, it was bad. When you disobey the word of God, you're going to have storms in your life. And not only when you disobey God, it is sometimes that God still allows us to go through storms. Paul did not disobey, but he was still with the folk that did, but he was on his way somewhere. See, if you are a born-again believer, faith is not immune to 
trouble. Uh, y'all don't, don't hear me. Just because you have faith doesn't mean you're not going to have trouble. Trouble comes <laughs> to everybody. W whether you are a Christian or a non-Christian, it rains on the just as well. Unjust get rained on, the just get rained on. It's not the rain. It's what you become after the rain comes. Ain't God all right? Here he is. They, dis they disobey. But in it, in, don't we serve an awesome God? Who even after they disobeyed, God still gave the man of God a word. Even God is so good, God is so awesome. After that we disobey, isn't it good that he'll still give us a word? Aren't you glad this morning that even through all of your mishaps, all of your mistakes, that he still gives you a word? He said to them, even though we're in this storm, he said, God told me, an angel stood by me last night and told me, if all of us stay in this ship, we won't perish. Ain't God all right. I don't care what you've done if you stay in the ship. If you stay under God's mercy and God's grace and the word of God, under the man of God, you won't perish. Even though you, oh yes, even though you made mistakes, even though you didn't listen and you disobeyed, if you stay in the word of God, you will not perish. Can I preach you this morning? He says you won't perish. Whatever you do, if the ship start cracking up, stay on the ship. If people disappoint you, stay on the ship. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You got to get past the swelling. I, and, and, and there's some things that are, that are, that'll are make you think you're going to swell up. You got to get past the swelling. Ain't God all right? So that drives me to my first point. If you, if you sit here, storms are made to take you to your next level. I said storms are made to take you to your next level. If you never go through a storm, you will never get to your next level. Can I say it this way? When you're on a mountain, if you look across, there is another mountain. But in order to get to that mountain, you got to come down and go in the plains of the valley to get over to the other. No wonder David said, he do, I walk. Y'all not hearing me. He, he did not say, I'm in the valley. He said, Ye do, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil. For God is with me because he's taking me somewhere. And not only that, early on in, 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 in that 23rd Psalms, he talks about God in, not in a personal way, but he gets to the personal, uh, he gets to the personal pronoun. He says in the last part of it, thou art with me. Thou rod, thy staff. At first he said, he lead me, he guide me, he making me. Oh, yeah. Oh, see, sometimes he has to make you. I wish I had somebody here to know that sometime in order for us to get some rest, he said he'll make me lay down. In order for you to stop, he'll, get, he'll just let sickness come your way and you have to lay in the bed and look up and say, Lord, I need to talk to you. See, you won't talk to him long as your health good. Sometime he'll make you lay down. I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, he's making America lay down right now. Somebody shouting, when they going to find a vaccine for this COVID-19? Let me tell you right now. God is making you lay down so you'll learn how to trust him. You'll learn how to make him not just talk about he lead me and guide me. You need to talk about he is with me. He'll prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. He'll anoint my head with all my cup. He wants your cup to run over. I feel like preaching. Yes, yes, yes. God wants that personal relationship where you don't talk about him. You know him. You just can't talk about him no more. 
you got to know him. And see, the only way to know him is you got to put you through some stuff where you have to put your nose to the grinding stone. And you'll be able to say, Lord, I can't do this by myself. I need you. That's why David wrote Psalms said, Lord, I need your help. He said, David, cry to the Lord. See, sometimes he puts you in places where you got to cry to him. I don't know about you, but every now and then I, I sit there and I, I've been through some things because one thing about the storms, I heard uh, Paul says, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. In other words, whatever you're going through, it's working for your good. He's taking you through that valley so you can get to that next mountain. Somebody said next level, next level, next level. I don't know about you, you who are watching me, you're going through some stuff right now, but I want to tell you, it's the next level God's trying to take you to. And in that next level, you're going to see things you never knew. You'll be able to look back and tell people, if you didn't talk about me, I would have never known how awesome God was. Can I, can I get some witnesses in here? So God, somebody shout, this storm is taking me to my next level. Not only is it taking to your next level, but sometimes when you're in this situation, you can't start blaming nobody. You have to take responsibility. Kind of wave your hand, say take responsibility. Yes, yes, not only, but to discover, Paul also discovered that it was because of the fire that the snake jumped on him. I said it was because of the fire. See, fire will make the snake jump on you. See, your anointing. See, if you, you take responsibility, what happens is you can't control who talked about you. You can't go around hanging on to he say, she say, they say it, and they say, they say it. Boy, that's a long ways, ain't it? They say it's enough when they, they say, they say it. Boy, you really, you really in trouble when they say, they say it. Uh, ain't God all right? That, that's what's wrong with most family. They say it, they say it. Who is they? I should have named Dara, they. So I know who they is. Ain't God all right? Let me tell you, you can't go around holding on to stuff. You got to take responsibility. You can't control the devil latching on to you, but you can control how long he hang on. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. You can't control people talking about you, but you can control how it hampers you. I feel like preaching in here. You can't control how folk lie on you, but you can control how it takes effect on you. How long you gonna go around? They lie on me. Oh, I feel like preaching. How long you gonna go around talking about they said? I can't stop. Sometimes things that happen in my life, sometimes depression, and oppression, sickness and stuff come, but it's up to you how long you hang on to it. Some folk get sick and shake it off. Some folk get sick with the same thing and die. Some folk get talked about in the choir, they come back next Sunday. Some folks get talked about one time, I ain't singing no more. Them folk make me sick. I wish I had some help here. Yes, yes, yes. See, you can't control other folk, but you can control you. I ain't God all right. I wish I had about five people saying you got to take responsibility. When things come your way, take responsibility and say, I determined my future folk can say you ain't gonna be nobody but that you don't have to be nobody because they said it you got to still talk to yourself and say i'm i am not what they say i am i am who god says i am i am the head 
not to tell. I'm above only, not beneath. God got the basket in the store. He going to bless my going in. He going to bless my coming out. I don't care what you say. You don't determine how God blesses me. It, just because, oh, y'all don't want to hear me. Just because I ain't riding don't mean I'm a sinner. My father's just teaching me something. I, I wish I had some help here. D don't, don't, don't say I'm broke because I'm not paying my tithe because I am paying my tithe. You just looking from the outside in. You don't know what's going on. Let, let me tell somebody, when folk looking from the outside in, they don't understand how God works just because I don't have that new car right now doesn't mean that I don't love God that I don't give to God. I'm just going through to get through the next mountain. Ain't God all right? Don't let nobody discourage you from doing the right thing because he said in due season, you're going to reap. And see, they looking from the outside in and they start saying, girl, you going to church and you going and you doing and this. Look at it. But look at you. Have, have anything changed for you? And look at yourself. Look at, oh, take responsibility. Shake it off. Get over the swelling. Ain't God all right? Somebody said, get over the swelling. Oh, Lord. Yes. I need you to just kind of raise your hand like you high five somebody. Don't touch nobody. And high five somebody and say, I'm coming forth. Somebody shout, I'm coming forth. When we look further at this message, we look down in here where Paul and, 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 and they got in there and they, they began to talk about Paul. They talked among themselves about Paul, but they didn't talk to Paul. Did, did, did you not know that people would talk about you with somebody else, but they would not come to you and talk about you? In verse 6 in that, in that, in that 28th chapter, they said, they said they, they, how be it they look when he should have swollen. When, 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 when they thought he should swell up. When they thought that his hands was going to start getting, because this is a venomous stick, and this snake only comes out when the fire comes, when the heat comes. And some of you all, you leave church because the snake came out that Sunday when I was preaching. This snake came out and told you, you know what, and I, 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 and you said, I ain't going back. You know what, you, you, you need to know that. You need to know where that snake at. Because the fire came, and the snake jumped out. They said, when Paul built the fire, the snake jumped out of, let me tell you, when you're praising God, Monday morning, you get your praise on today, Monday morning, yeah, that devil comes. See, if you don't have good church, you don't have to worry about it. If you come here and be blessed, be quiet, and look at me, crazy, and ain't got your mind on Jesus, you're not looking for nothing, not expecting nothing, but when you, you don't have to worry about nothing next. Oh, I had a great week, yeah, because you ain't, you ain't tapped on that devil's foot. But when you begin to tap into his territory, you get in trouble. Monday morning, you ain't even expecting all of a sudden, boom, you all happy. Boy, we had a good time. Son, you can't wait to break to tell your co-workers and stuff how God moved in Pleasant Grove. And before you can get to tell them, here come hell. Ain't God all right? Yes. But you need to say, the weapon is formed, but it won't prosper. They looked, they talked among themselves, and they were forming a weapon. Say, oh, baby, he must have sinned. He should, he should be swelling up by now. He should, he, he should be dying by now. He won't be at church Sunday, girl. You know what I heard? Y'all don't hear me. Now, I'm, I'm not, I'm, don't say I said nothing. I'm just telling you what I heard. And you don't repeat me, though, knowing you're talking to the person that you want to repeat. Don't you repeat me. 
but I heard. I'm, but I'm going to church Sunday. I'm just going to see if he's going to be there. I'm going to church Sunday just to see if she's going to be there. Because, girl, I had heard that her and her husband broke up. Oh, y'all y'all don't want to hear me. Ain't God all right? Yes, yes, yes. You need to... Raise your hand and say, I don't care what they said. I'm coming forth. I'm coming forth. When, when, when then people look for you to be swallowed up, they look for you to shut it down. They look for Some people come visit you in the hospital. They ain't come to visit you for no good. They just coming to see if you on your last leg. They get back on the telephone. They begin to call. Baby. I'm going to tell y'all. I think they call the family. <laughs> Girl, thank you for calling me and letting me know. They're glad to get that call, too. They want them gone, too. Y'all not hearing me. Woo! I can imagine. Oh, yes. Somebody call. I, I got to say this. Somebody called one of my, my members. They said, I heard your pastor got that COVID. Thank God, all right. They wanted me to have it so bad. Thank God, all right. She's sitting back there laughing right now. I heard your pastor got that COVID. Yeah, I got it. Under my feet. Thank God, all right. Now, if they found out they didn't have it, they didn't call it back. They called like they were concerned. We're just going to pray for him. Why didn't they call and say, oh, I'm so glad. I know he didn't have it. No, they didn't say that. Oh, man. Thank God, all right. Thought we had him gone. Let, let me tell you something. People will count you out. They look for Paul to be swollen. And the Bible says in that verse, in, in verse 6 and, and 7, look what he said. And he said, how be they look when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while. See, they watching you. Even though you think, you saying, I'm all right. They still saying, yeah, I think, I think something else coming though, y'all. Y'all just wait. It ain't over yet. for a, a, a what why a, a great why and so but, but, but guess what's going to happen let me, let me tell you how God's anointing see see the devil latch on to the anointing see when you latch on when you got the anointing in your life you attract good things and bad things but the good, bad things look like good things everything latches on to the anointing and he said and they looked a great why and saw no harm come to him they changed their minds. And look what they said. And said, y'all, he must be a God. Because ain't no way in the world you can come out of something like this. He should have been swollen. up. He should be dead. He should have stopped going to church. He should have quit. He should have thrown up his hand. He got to be a God. That's how about to tell somebody I don't care what comes my way. I'm not God. But that's my daddy. And my elder brother is named Jesus. And Jesus said, I'm going away, but I'm going to, I'm going to send you a, another comforter. When, when he has come. And, and see, when you get filled with he, and I'm talking about this a person, the Holy Ghost. When he has come, he will guide you. You will walk over serpents. They won't even harm you. You can drink any deadly thing. It won't even harm you. You can lay hands on the sick and they will get up. I, I, I stopped by to tell you, by his stripes, I am healed. Ain't God all right? 
Yes. Somebody shout, I'm coming forth. Shout it real loud. Somebody here know that they counted you out. They counted you for dead. You know that. You know that that accident you had. That little fin the bin could have been your life story. Have I got a witness in here? Is that right? Not only that, to throw in the towel, they were looking for you to do it. They were looking for you in the midst of your situation to throw in the towel. Because it's over now. Because uh, they ain't seen nothing like this in your life. Can I get a witness in here? You look at Paul. Paul had been chosen by God to do a great work. And when you are chosen by God to do a, a great work, it's not going to be easy. Can I tell you, my trials is tougher than yours. That's why David said, the Lord is my shepherd. See? Because he was a shepherd himself. But then a shepherd was leading him. See, I'm your shepherd. But I got a shepherd leading me. My troubles are more than your troubles. Because when your troubles come, you just only think about you. But I got thousands and thousands of people depending on me that I have to worry about. I don't just worry about Pastor Hare. I worry about every soul that hears the sound of my voice. Every soul that I come in contact with, they're on my mind daily. Because uh, he said, uh, when he was a shepherd, David said, I, uh, when the lamb, the lamb came, this is what I did. He took a sheep from the fold. I just didn't stay there with the other sheep. I got sheep that sometimes get contrary and walk away from here. Uh, but they're still on my heart. Ain't God all right when you're a real shepherd? You got to have the heart of God. See, when you don't even obey him, he still got you on his mind because God loves you unconditionally. He loves you. Thank God all right. Oh, Lord, with grace and mercy. That means that uh, your grace and you must have the one that's keeping you. Oh, y'all don't hear me right now in the midst of all this trouble. Oh, Lord, his grace and his mercy is keeping me. No wonder Paul said, if you stay on the ship, stay on the ship you'll be saved. But if you get off the ship, you're going to lose your life. I'm so glad I made up my mind to stay on the ship. Is anybody out there made up your mind? You're going to stay on the ship. If you're going to stay on the ship, kind of wave your hand and said, I started out with Jesus. I am going through. Ah! Some people have started and stopped, but I've learned how to get past my swelling. 
I've had some good days. I've had some bad days. I've had some sleepless nights. Oh, Lord. But all of my good days outweigh my bad days. I've learned how when trouble comes, I won't complain. Yay. See, sometimes when the devil latch on to us, we begin to complain. But that what Paul did, he shook it off. They thought he was going to swell up. He shook it off. Yeah. All your trials, shake them all. Ain't God all right? Because God is taking you to another level. God is taking you somewhere to another place where you can be used by him. He's going to use you like you've never been used before. Ain't God all right? In that same island, it was some barbarous folk. In that same island, the one we're talking about him, there was a man after Paul didn't die. After they chained their man, his name was Publius. He was a great man in that town. He took Paul into his home. Somebody in here. God is going to put somebody in your life to give you a miracle. This man was a great man. Took him to his house. Kept him there. Three long days. Kept taking care of him. He was courteous to Paul. See, some folks been treating you bad. When God, when you shake some stuff off, you're going to draw Oh Lord, you're going to draw some people to your life that's going to make things better for you. You're going to draw prosperity. You're going to draw blessings when you start shaking stuff off. Get through your trial. Come on here, hell. Preach this word. Can I put up court in the middle and stop right there? They took him to the house. He stayed there three long days. They fed him, took care of Paul. There's going to be some people. You ain't got to do nothing that's going to bless you in a magnificent way. People you thought wouldn't bless you when you shake off the devil. Let go of some stuff. There's some people going to bless you that you thought would never bless you. Stay there three days. Three days. All of a sudden, I feel like preaching. Oh, Publis died. His daddy got sick with a bloody fever. We'll call it COVID-19. His daddy lay sick with a bloody fever. Paul went in, laid hands on him, and he got well. Ain't God all right? What you saying here? Took Paul to another level. Another level of miracles. And when he got well, look what the folks did. They gave him money. He said everything he needed when he left that barbarous town. Everything you need, somebody will give it to you. Everything we need when you get the next God will supply all your needs. Ain't God all right? Is it anybody here? Love the Lord. Anybody right out there want to jump up and down? Jump on that devil. Tell that devil I got past my swelling. It didn't take me out. That diabetes. It was designed to take you out. That leukemia, it was designed to take you out. That drug, 
with that drug addiction it was designed to take you out that bad relationship it was designed to take you out that family member that didn't like you it was designed to take you out but you need you need you need to go back to them people right now tell them tell them you thought I was gonna be down but I'm back on my feet I'm back on my feet <laughs> you thought sickness was gonna take me out but I'm back on my feet <laughs> yes got down to my last time but I'm back on my feet <laughs> I wasn't riding since you seen me the last time but I'm back on my feet jump up and down said I'm back on my feet I'm back on my feet wave your hand say I'm back on my feet that sickness COVID-19 thought it was going to take you out but you want to wave your hand oh, I'm back on my feet I'm back on my feet and I waved on hand said because somebody said because I shook it off Come on, wave them. Say, I shook it off. I shook it off. Come on, wave it right now. Say, I shook it off. Mm. Y'all don't hear me? I feel all right. <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm going on to clue now. <laughs> mm. That old story. Great God. Mm. Oh Lord, that it told uh, a long time ago. Mm, there was an old farmer, a great guy. Old farmer, he had an old, old goat. Yes, Lord, great guy. He had this old goat there, and now. Uh, one day, this farmer decided to time up mm, and go on to town to buy some food. Ain't God all right? Oh, I was in town. Great God. Oh, Lord. Can I tell the story? Mm, oh, 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 God. He began to wrap up break a loose uh, from his tied up position oh lord when he broke a loose uh, he did not know that there was an old uh, duck well right there in the backyard great god oh the old goat uh, he fell down uh, in that duck well and uh when the farmer got home he saw that the, the goat was untied. He began to look for the goat. And uh, when he tried to find him, he couldn't find that goat. Hey, Lord. But when, when he did hear him, he heard him way, way, way down. Oh, Lord. In that old duck well. Oh, yeah. Then he said, uh, I believe I trying to pull him out. Mm -hmm. He kept on sticking the rope down in that old duck well, but he couldn't pull the goat out. Oh, yeah, Lord. He finally said, uh, I love that old goat, but one thing about it, uh, it's over now. Why, uh, I, I, I know he would love to keep living, but uh, it's over now. 
ain't God all right? So uh, he said, only thing I can do now, but I read to you, Leo, I can take my shovel and begin to dig dirt and go and give him a decent burial. Ain't God all right? Somebody right out there trying to give you a decent burial that they think is over for you. Ain't God all right? Well, he took that shiver. Oh, Lord. He began to dig. And uh, he shiver some dirt down in that old well. Ain't God all right? But oh, every time he shiver, there was something going on down in that well that he couldn't see. got going on in your life because they're looking from the outside in. See, when you shove a dirt on me, you don't know what, what's going on down on the inside. Ain't God all right? And every time, y'all don't hear me, every time, he'll throw that dirt down in that well. Oh, go, oh, go, we'll just shake it all and stomp it under his feet. Ain't God all right? Oh, every time he shovel, he'll shake it all and pack it under his feet. And hours went back, and after a while, after a while, old goat <laughs> he had packed so much he had packed so much he kept on rise I wish I had somebody in here that had packed so much stuff that you just keep on rise keep on rise keep on rise every time they lie on you step on up Shake it off, and he walked out on dry land. When you thought it was over, tell somebody, I'm back now. I'm back now. I got my praise back. I got my dance back. I got the Holy Ghost back. You thought I was dead. Tell him thank you right now. All over this building. Tell God thank you. Oh yes, oh yes. I got past my swelling. How many got past your swelling? Lift your hands up and say, I've gotten past my swelling. I don't know what it is that latched on to you. But it's up to you for how long it stay latched to you. Don't let stuff stay on you that you need to get rid of. Stop walking around with stuff that you can't carry. Jesus said, cast all your cares upon me because I care for you. God bless you today. Let us pray. I got past my swelling because I shook it off shook it off and God got me to the next level after this you're going to see God move in a miraculous way if we can just hang on in here stay with the ship it's taking us somewhere don't jump off listening to this and listening to that stay with the ship hallelujah it's time for giving, and God bless you today. God keep you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God bless every person. I'm going to pray for you as you get ready to give in the offering, as we get ready to leave here. Hallelujah. Giving makes a life. And I have to say that one more time. Giving makes a life. What you make on your job makes a living. 
Living is not life. Life is joy, peace, happiness, and a relationship with God. And giving shows that, God, I love you more than anything. Because it's, it's a sacrifice to give. Because you feel like, you know, I got this I get, need to do. I got this I need to do. But giving is a sacrifice. That's why God wants you to worship him and give. And then he knows then that you really, really love him. And then he, you know, he don't mind meeting your need because you have sacrificed and you've shown him that I love you more and more. I love myself. Because if it wasn't for you, God, I wouldn't be here. And that's, that's life. That's a life when you got God, your needs being met. And God, all right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Come on, Deacons. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 